an anti-Semite used to mean a man who hated Jews. Now, it means a man who is hated by the Jews. Joseph Sobrin The United States of America is not the world's most powerful country. It never has been. It was Israel. Yes, you heard that right. The reason for that claim is that Israel attacked the US and killed 34 Americans with total impunity. In June of 1967, when Israel's war with Jordan, Syria and Egypt was going on, the USS Liberty was attacked by the Israeli army. 70 miles off the Egyptian coast, in international waters, the spy ship was patrolling to keep a check on the war that it did not escalate into a nuclear war. The 8th of June was a calm day with clear blue skies till 2 p.m. when the naval spy ship was attacked by Israeli warplanes. The Israeli and the US government said, and till this day, say that it was a case of a friendly misfire. However, that is what can be farthest from the truth. Come, let's revisit the event and analyze what happened on that fateful day. Even today, the exact motives of the unprovoked attack on an unarmed ship, let alone one that clearly read USS Liberty on its stern by armor piercing grounds are still unknown. Of course, how would the motives be uncovered if both sides covered it up and never admitted that it was a deliberate attempt? According to international maritime law, anything found in waters not belonging or claimed by any sovereign state is the property of the founder. You get the idea how it is the right of every country to freely navigate in waters that are not the territory of any country. Hence, Israel's attack on that ship was in severe violation of international law. Now, take this. That ship was unarmed with containing just a few soldiers. Most of the staff was technical and maintenance staff, and the rest were under the command of the National Security Agency. Another major war crime, attacking non-combatants. The attack was so horrific that the planes shot even the life rafts so that no one could even escape peacefully. Now, come to the point of the vessel being American. GTR-5 was written on the ship's bow in a size that could be seen from miles away. That code is designated to American spy ships and stands for General Technical Research. It is not even remotely possible that the Israelis could not identify the ship as an American and would have mistaken it for an Arab one. The ship had no weapons and was just intercepting communications, and that too for Israel, because Israel was the closest ally of America, or so the Americans thought. The ship had some of the most advanced communication systems on board, still Israeli aircrafts were able to block transmission of the distress call sent by the USS Liberty. This is another major violation of international law. Blocking tactical frequencies is allowed, but blocking SOS signals is a serious war crime. How could the Israeli Air Force have been able to do that? If technically speaking, by the equipment provided to them by the exact country that they were attacking, the US. But on the level of decision making, hubris in its most potent form is the most apt answer. Just ponder upon it a bit. Who would know the distance frequencies other than an ally? Due to this blocking of the distress call, out of the 294 crew members on board, 34 were killed and 172 were injured with life debilitating injuries, meaning more than two thirds of the crew. One of the biggest wartime tragedies on day 4 of the war between Israel and three countries from the Muslim world is something that has been secret for much of the world until recently. The sequence of events is really disturbing for everyone. The ship was spotted at 5.55 am 
by the Israeli armed forces and marked as a neutral ship, as it only had four 50 caliber machine guns and was not engaging with anyone. The damage control officers, John Scott and Jim Smith, have time and again discussed that point ever since. The Israeli government claimed in its investigation that an explosion in the town of El Arish had occurred at the coast of the Sinai Peninsula. Israel had captured that area in the war and the official version of their story claims that their soldiers thought that it had been attacked by the USS Liberty. They say that there were no flags displayed on the vessel and the jets flying at 3000 feet at about 800 miles per hour could not properly read the GTR-5 marking. People who call themselves the supporters of Israel are actually supporters of its moral degeneration and ultimate destruction. Professor Dr. Noam Chomsky Israeli government claims would have made sense if the Israeli jets had been fired back at. The USS Liberty did not. When the jets had stopped firing, they dropped napalm, a tactical weapon that can stick to its targets like no other incendiary weapon. Ten minutes after that, the Israeli ships fired five torpedoes at the USS Liberty. Skipper William Lauren McGonagall managed to save the ship from four of the torpedoes, but one hit the ship at the waterline and made a 40-feet gaff in the ship. McGonagall received the Congressional Medal of Honor for his valiant response on the attack. No one could remember or describe the incident better than the survivors and one of them was David George Lucas. Lucas was the in charge of the tech force. He was 25 years old then and remembered it clearly because his first son had born on the first day of cruise of the USS Liberty. He makes sure that every year a memorial is held at the US Navy Memorial in Washington, D.C., where the names of the 34 killed are read to the tolling of a bell and taps, and the traditional military funeral lament is played. The context of this attack has much more to do with American politics inside America and internationally than it had to do with Israel. But how? How did an American ship got attacked by Israel due to writing against racial discrimination and poverty and the Vietnam War? This is a question answered by the claim that it is the United States of Israel and not the United States of America. Meaning that Israel, wanting to further its war objectives in the Middle East, wanted to attack Egypt without warning and did so on June the 5th, after jamming the radar sets at the US Embassy in Tel Aviv. There were just people like translators and Morse code interpreters on board interpreting diplomatic, military and governmental communications. When the ship was able to make contact with the US carrier Saratoga and USS America, the American aircraft carriers were in the middle of a nuclear weapons drill and took some time to be armed with conventional weapons before taking off. Twelve fighter jets and four tanker planes were dispatched by the commander of the 6th task force in the Mediterranean to defend the Liberty Dime. The American naval attaché had been summoned by the Israelis and he was told that there has been an attack on the USS Liberty by mistake. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara directly ordered Real Admiral Lawrence R. Geis to recall those planes on the carrier and instead an Israeli government helicopter reached the Liberty with the American naval attaché and the Israeli government officials. The Air Force of Israel knew that this was an American ship because this was the fourth day of the Arab-Israel war in which Israel was winning remarkably and by the time of the attack, in words of Bob Wilson, they owned the skies and the ground. And there was not a single moving thing in the area which the Israelis did not know about. 
The USS Liberty was the most decorated ship in US Navy history with 840 medals. Even World War II ships that had gone through several battles did not reach that level of military honor. It really is remarkable that Liberty managed to limp to a safe port and we got to know what transpired with that unfortunate ship. Documents related to the attack and its aftermath provided in the cache of the files leaked by the National Security Agency whistleblower Edward Snowden reveal that the government communications headquarters of the UK was also involved in the incident. The NSA still regards most of the information about the incident as classified, but the documents show that NSA had its own classified Hebrew transliteration system. This indicates that even though Israel is the 51st state of America, the actual operations of intelligence are far more complicated than that. Even the Hebrew translators on board were referred to as special Arabic linguists. Maybe the NSA was preparing for the chance if such an attack were to occur on Americans? Who knows what they do and why? After all, for so long after its formation, NSA stood for no such agency. So how can we assume that they are up to any good with all those clearances and all those budgets?